Very pleased to announce that the Eccentric Man YouTube channel is being sponsored by Lost Art Games in Stevenage. It's my local game store, and John, who works there, is one of my main opponents. Lost Art Games have uh, a real good variety of different things, board games, card games, war games, loads of different things, and they do online and in-store sales, as, long, as well as gaming. Lost Ark will be open from Wednesday the 2nd of December. I think they're opening up at 10 o'clock in the morning. So you'll be able to get all your hobby gaming stuff. Check out their link in the description below and see if there's anything you fancy. Uh, they can order in lots of different things from many different manufacturers if they haven't got it in stock. Greetings from the eccentric man. And a little uh, project update on my op sea lion. These are the artisan Falsham Jaegers that I painted up. And I'm going to up the ante. And I'm increasing from a squad to a platoon. And I've gone down the route of Crusader miniatures from North Star. And 1940 Falsham Jaegers. They look to fit in quite well with the artisan ones. So let's have a look at them in a little bit more detail. First up is the headquarters command. Four figures in the box and some nice little poses. One with his map book. Again, good detail on these Crusader miniatures. A little bit of flash to be scraping off with the knife, but not so bad. The uh, junior leader and senior leaders. Nice variety. I've been chatting with John at Strong Oak about the colours for painting because he's painting up a unit of these as, as well. Radio Man, which is nice. So we've been discussing the colours. This one is a command pack as opposed to the headquarters pack. So again, it gives you another four unique figures to use. So your headquarters is uh, really well set out. And of course, yeah, Chain of Command will also work for my bolt action games as well. It's all, uh, as I've said, it's all uh, aimed at my project of Operation Sea Lion, which is coming along a treat now. The buildings are being made as we speak. I've got a suitable 28 mil lighthouse. I'm angling Geek Villain for a map which is suitable for like warming up to non sea or a small town village with a high street uh, village green and like a churchyard sort of thing. So we're, we're working on that. Um, I've got my radar station sorted out. I've got my pillboxes sorted out. So it's all coming together and I can uh, use these Falsham Jaegers for either a platoon attack or for a just a quick glider attack of one squad. So it's, it's a, a good variation. I've been thinking about the, the progress of this op sea line and I'm thinking three maps or three table layouts. The first one is um, farmland, outskirts of the town, for a paratroop landing. Then I've got the coastal edge, so I can do the lighthouse, the pillboxes, and the little radar station, and the Bofus gun from Bad Squiddo to paint up. So that gives me a Bofus emplacement as well. So that could be either seaborne with the um, U-boat crew, which is quite nice, or the Falsham Jaeger squad trying to get to the U-boat um, crew with the attack on the lighthouse, so that, that's coming good. I'm painting up some First Corps Home Guard as well, so they look very nice. And then the third battle map is hoping to be the, the village town where I've got the buildings that are coming from ham and jam. So uh, I'll do a video on them when they come up. So lots of, lots of things on the go for uh, op sea line and bolt action or chain of command. So 
I'm looking forward to next year now, 2021. So we'll see how that pans out. So let's have a look at some more of the figures. Next up, the Rifleman. So there are two packs of Rifleman and there are eight variations of the basic Rifleman, which is quite good. So yeah, basic Rifleman, very nice. The, uh, the Crusader sculpts. Again, they're only little bits of flash and mold lines to clear up as you always have on the metals. But overall, not so bad. So painting wise, I was uh, just sort of talking about uh, in the previous section and color wise, the bandoliers that come down there, you can see them, they are going to be Luftwaffe blue and we're torn between German field grey for the trousers or Luftwaffe blue. We're not quite sure, but the, the overall bone shaker is looking at probably a Russian green, Vallejo Russian green base coat, lighting it up with the middle stone. I've done that on some artisan ones and they, they look fine to me. Uh, so, but it, it's over the trousers what we think about is the key thing, whether it's field grey or the Luftwaffe blue. Uh, please put it in the comments below if um, you've got thoughts on it. Uh, always open to uh, it widen our knowledge of color, uniform colours. But yeah, so nice little figures. And these are all for the 1940 campaign, either Eben, Eben Marl or Sicily, not Sicily, yeah, Sicily, um, Crete. Any, anywhere where the paratroopers dropped in. So Op Sea Line 1940 is uh, one of the options, uh, the key op one I'm looking for. So yeah. Should be good. Yeah, I'm liking these a lot. So I, I I wasn't quite sure with the chain of command, so I've had to have a look through my Blitzkrieg 1940 book uh, uh, to get the right setup for the squads. So yes, the chain of command is more historically accurate than bolt action. So the chain of command gives you a junior leader and then two LMG sections. So the LMG sections are three men plus two rifles. So that gives you the junior leader and two sections of five men. So each section has an LMG and then riflemen with it. So that meant I had to buy quite a few more LMGs. In fact, four packs <laughs> all told. So let's have a little look at them. MG 34s as the early war because they've got the round barrels as opposed to the MG 42s which have the square barrels or rectangular anyway. Two varieties so you've got a variety in each section but not over on the squads but that's fine. Ammo belts and boxes of ammo and sp yeah, that's good. Lots of Germans to paint up. Junior leaders next and the SMG unit well they're not you not an SMG unit but the junior leaders uh, of each section or squad they come with their SMG so I only got four of these because I'm working to the chain of command more so than the the bolt action which allows you to have a few more SMGs in the early war um, list but I think that's probably 
wishful thinking. So here we have uh, our Falsham Jaegers, junior leaders, with their SMG. So yeah, nice. Once again, with the metals, the straps are nicely prominent, so it should be okay to paint up. Mold lines to take out, but that's what we get. Yeah, four different varieties. Always little bits of metal. I have to uh, hoover my battle mat next. Yeah, I do like those. Unfortunately, it's getting a little bit brighter. They say unfortunately. It's nice to have it brighter, but it's getting a little bit um, bright for the reflection of the metal, white metal. So most people who put up white metal uh, as manufacturers always give them a wash so you can see the detail. But anyway, that's, uh, this is the some of the support troops. And we've got our anti-tank rifle. We've got our 50mm mortar. Oh, that's a what you call it? Is the uh, loader or not loader? But the guy with the ammunition. So a little 50mm mortar there. So that's our some of our support choices. Now medium machine gun which is just the uh, MG34 on a tripod for stabilized shooting. That will probably need another two, two men, I think, for chain of command. Uh, slightly different to bolt action. Bolt action goes with three men. And chain of command, uh, I think it's uh, five crew, yeah, that's it. So five more crew needed. Again, with your smaller support guns, the 75 infantry gun, 0.75 centimetre infantry gun, crew of five and a junior leader, and the PAC 36, 37 mil anti-tank gun, crew of five and junior leader. So with that, I need to get a few more little uh, support guys, but, um, I think I've got a sufficient rifleman to add in to make up the crew of those. So, yeah, another support team. And then we have the 81mm mortar crew. So we've got uh, a guy with a submachine gun. He'll be our junior leader. And then two crewmen, so I need another three crewmen for the mortar. Yep, so nice little sculpts. To give me my Falsham Jaeger platoon. And then last, but no means least, our gun crew. Only come in packs of three, so we'll need another two of these, and we also need a gun to go with them. Uh, probably the gun we'll get, uh, I'm gonna have to have a look. Rubicon do some nice uh, guns. I'll have to have a look and see how they fit for size for, the, uh, for those. Check out who does the Faustian Jaegers. I know, uh, is it uh, something 40? They do some, and they do they do Faustian Jaegers. I wonder if they've got the guns. I should have to have a look on their website and see what we have. Junior leader, 
somebody with a shell, and maybe the firer. Yeah, looks it. So yeah, that's the Falsum Jaeger project for Opsi Lion and the like. Oh, shaky, shaky. The tripod is not that stable. But um, yeah, that's another project. So I think we're looking at 2021, our project of Op Op Sea Lion, getting it together finally, and our American Civil War Union coming along. What else have we got on, our, on the pipeline? Well, let's have a look. Things to finish off. Uh, we've got the 10 mil that's 10 mil American Civil War for uh, large battles. That's nearly done. And we've got to look at our French Napoleonic Peninsula at some stage. And also our French 6 mil Peninsula. So that'll be about uh, 2021 early part of the taken care of. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this uh, little roundup of what's going on and the review of the Falchim Jaegers. Anyway. Till the next time, I'll do a proper update of what's going on and where we are with the channel. Till the next time, take care and see you soon. Don't forget to give it a like and subscribe if you haven't.